Welcome to the MPP Who, where we give you a recap of last week's news on everything education. On February 1st, multiple historically black colleges and universities received bond threats. Institutions included Howard University, Edward Waters University, and Morgan State University, but according to NPR, there were at least three others. In a tweet, the president of Edward Waters University said, The vicious and racially motivated targeting of Florida's first HBCU is extremely unsettling for our community. These threats resulted in the need for lockdown and canceled classes. Currently, local and state police and federal law enforcement are investigating the threats. In a statement, the Bureau said, The FBI is aware of the series of bomb threats around the country, and we are working with our law enforcement partners to address any potential threats. As always, we would like to remind members of the public that if they observe anything suspicious, to report it to law enforcement immediately. Last week, Education Secretary Miguel Cardona discussed the need for educational institutions to step up and address student mental health issues, learning losses, and systemic injustices. Cardona acknowledged that although schools have made strides in reopening, there's lots more work to be done. He stated, we must level up our entire system of education from pre-kindergarten through adult education. Cardona celebrated the K-12 progress throughout the last few months. At the beginning of the new year, the majority of the country's children transitioned back to in-person learning. However, with Omicron cases surging, some schools are facing difficulties. Currently, around 4,000 schools continue facing disruptions. Regarding next steps, Cardona called on schools to increase student access to mental health support, nurses, and career counselors. He also asked schools to focus on nurturing parent engagement and interventions for students who faced extreme challenges around the pandemic. Cardona made specific requests, such as schools providing intensive tutoring to those who fell farthest behind academically, and that every student be involved in at least one extracurricular activity. The secretary discussed the need for increased funding for schools, specifically those serving students with low-income backgrounds or those with disabilities. He also challenged state leaders to rethink how they fund their K-12 systems. Cardona stated, Many of the students who have been most underserved during the pandemic are the same ones who have had to deal with barriers to a high-quality education since well before COVID-19. We need our districts and states to take a hard look at their ways of funding schools and for those leaders to make the difficult decisions to fix broken systems that perpetuate inequalities in our schools across the country. In Detroit, Central Michigan University told 58 prospective students that they were going to be awarded full Centralis Scholar Awards, which are scholarships that include a room and boarding. On Wednesday night, the university apologized for this mistake. They then offered the equivalent of a full tuition scholarship to each student who was involved. In a statement, CMU spokesman Aaron Mills said, We deeply regret the disappointment and frustration caused by the test message error in the student portal. To make it right, we will be reaching out to each of the 58 students who saw the congratulatory message regarding the Centralis scholarship and offering the equivalent of a full tuition scholarship. This mistake occurred while employees were piloting new technology. Accidentally, they ended up posting a message to student portals about the Centralis Scholar Awards. Centralis Scholar Awards are the school's most distinguished merit scholarships. Not only do they include room and boarding, but they offer students admission to the honors program, full tuition, and a $5,000 study abroad fund. In Texas, schools are banning books on race and sexuality, which are disappearing from school library shelves due to the effort of parents and conservative politicians. An NBC News investigation has discovered that schools are removing hundreds of books that feature themes including race, sexuality, and gender. Recently, Texas State Representative Matt Krause put more than 800 titles on a watch list. All across Texas, these books are going under review. In some cases, school librarians have objected. Many of these librarians mentioned to NBC News that they have been experiencing hostile work environments and the pressure to remove books that could produce criticism. Book bans are not new. Throughout history, 
We've seen book bans that have the intent of protecting children from upsetting or uncomfortable images. While in reality, these bans may leave children ignorant to relevant stories, themes, and experiences. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss next week's episode.